Hey there, my name's Cam Flurry, and if you're interested in recording drums, this video is for you. I've got an essentials list on recording gear that you might need to get your drums sounding awesome for videos online. Let's get to it. There are so many different mic kits on the market, we get analysis paralysis in trying to figure out what microphones are needed for our setup and our budget. So I put together a few here that we can go over to see if they fit your needs. The first set of microphones I'm going to show you are the CAD 7 series. Now these are the exact microphones that I got for myself when I first started out doing YouTube videos. It comes with a kick drum mic, a snare mic two overheads, and enough to cover three toms. This kit also includes all of the clips you're gonna need to attach them to your drums or to microphone stands if you've already got some. Next up is the Lewitt Microphones DTP Beat Kit Pro. This comes with a kick drum mic, a snare mic, three tom mics, and two for overheads. Now we're increasing our budget a little bit, but these microphones are the best bang for your buck and you're gonna get a really extraordinary sound if you do decide to go with this option. If you're going to get microphones, you're obviously gonna to need to get cables and stands, so I've managed to find an Audix drum microphone package that has all of this included. Just go to the Sweetwater website and look up Audix DP7 with stands and cables, and that'll come right up, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. When we're playing drums, it's important that we protect our hearing. But when recording drums, it's also important that we can hear what it is that we're trying to record to. You've probably seen these before, maybe even already have a set. They're the Vic Firth ISO headphones. They give you quite a bit of attenuation and noise reduction and helps protect your hearing. And not only that, is it's got a eighth inch cord adapter to it so you can plug it in to say like an iPod or you can plug it into a little Mackie mixer like I do and have it run back from your interface. The next option are the Shure SE215s. Personally, I've been using these for many, many years and I think they're great. Now here's a pro tip, I usually take one of the earbuds slightly out of my ear canal so that I can hear my drumming a little better, thus giving me a little bit better of a performance because I can actually hear my playing. You're gonna need some piece of software to record into. Might I suggest you look into using Reaper? I only paid $60 for a license over its lifetime and I've had nothing but good things to say about it. Reaper is pretty easy to use. I'm not gonna go on about it. I can put that in another video. You can also use other programs like Pro Tools and Logic if you really want things to crash all the time, then go with Pro Tools. If you're not familiar with the word interface, let me explain. An interface takes the analog signal from your microphone and then turns it into binary into a form of communication that your computer can understand. There are many, many options on the market to choose from as far as interfaces are concerned. Interfaces are a crucial piece of gear, especially when you're recording drums because drums require multiple inputs. If you do get one of those microphone packages, then you'll need at least eight inputs or eight channels of preamps inside of an interface. If you're looking for an interface that has eight inputs, then look no further. I've got one myself. It's the Behringer ADA8200. Now, this is probably the least expensive preamps on the market and you'll get the best bang for your buck. The great thing about this is not only does it have eight analog inputs, it also has an ADAC connector so you can connect it to another interface to expand the amount of inputs that you have. This interface also has the ability to provide your microphones with phantom power if they do require so. The only downfall with this interface is that you cannot individually select phantom power for each of the preamps. It just goes throughout all of them. So if you want phantom power, it's for all eight or none. If you're looking for a little bit more out of an eight channel interface, might I suggest looking into Focusrite's 18i20. I believe they're on the third generation now. I've got the second generation, but it'll give you control. If you have a set of speakers you wanna use as monitors, you can do that with this, this unit. And you can also have two individual headphone jacks, which is great for routing to a mixer over to your drums. And then you can have full control of how you wanna dial in what you're hearing back for playback. You might call them speakers, but they can also be referred to as monitors. There's a lot of great and affordable options on the market, but we're looking for something that's not gonna cost us thousands and thousands of dollars, even if our room isn't acoustically treated or flat for their response to even matter all that much. 
we're just looking at some options that'll get us started and we can grow from there and always expand and upgrade if we need to. The monitors that I currently have, the KRK Rocket 5s, are roughly $400 for the pair. They're most likely the most affordable on the market. These are the speakers that I've been using for the past few years. They're pretty good. They're not top of the line, but they're not those Mackey speakers that Glenn Fricker always speaks highly of. Another pro tip is that if you have a smaller room for mixing or if you're listening back in a smaller room, then I'd suggest not to get a speaker that has a subwoofer any larger than five inches because that is just quite a bit of sound for a small room. It's just gonna bounce around and you're gonna have a hard time listening back and all your stuff is gonna be smeared. And without getting into like specifics, it's just, you're gonna have a bad time. The Cali LP6s are another affordable option when it comes to monitoring. The Cali LP6s won't break the bank and they have slightly more options than the KRK monitors. If you're looking for clearer sounding monitors, then look no further and look into the Cali LP6s. There are a few other options that I started out with. There's a Zoom 4QN little recorder. It's got an XY um, configuration of microphones inside and it does pretty good at attenuating. Now remember, this is only a guide to help figure out what you might need to record your drums and to start doing videos. Now we can obviously do it with our phone, the sound quality is not the best, but you can also do it with little Zoom sound recorders if you feel overwhelmed with the amount of money you might have to spend on a setup like that. Hopefully this guide helps you understand what is all involved with a drum recording setup. It doesn't need to be that fancy, you can do it with your phone and there's really no excuses as to how to put yourself out there on the internet. I will make this PDF available for download down in the description below and you can go through all the stuff we just talked about and you can have your own copy of it if it's kind of a, a wish list, so to speak, that you want to work towards. If you ever have any questions, comments, or concerns about drum cording, you can send an email or you can message me through my website or just leave a comment down below and let me know if you do have any questions. Thanks so much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.